Hey everybody, rare treat today. The kids are out of the house during the day, so I get to shoot while it's bright outside instead of after they go to bed, which makes things a lot nicer, some natural light coming in. So uh, let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm Eli Stouth. This is Read to Your Kids, and today we're gonna to touch on a very important concept friendship. I got three books lined out. Each one of them goes over a different kind of lesson on friendship. All are great to have in your collection. All are really good reads. So let's get started with book number one. All right, Big Wolf, Little Wolf. This was one of the first like three to five books that I got probably in part because my son's name is Wolf. So it was an added bonus, but it's a great story and great illustrations as well. What is the story? We start with Big Wolf. He's lived under a tree, the same tree, his whole life. It's always been that way. One day, another wolf walks up. At first, Big Wolf is nervous that this approaching wolf might be bigger than he is, but that's not the case. It's a little wolf, and that sets Big Wolf at ease. The little wolf wordlessly stays under Big Wolf's tree all day. He spends the night and follows Big Wolf through his morning routine the next day. It's all a bit much for Big Wolf to take. But as he leaves the tree to take his daily walk through the forest, he looks back, feels a sense of comfort, knowing that he's not only bigger, but it turns out he's better at Little Wolf in almost every activity the two have shared. Now when Big Wolf returns from his walk, Little Wolf is gone. And Big Wolf, who has always lived alone under his tree, feels lonely for the first time in his life. He waits for Little Wolf to return. The seasons change. He watches, pines for his return, and finally, Next spring, the little wolf comes back. Now, Big Wolf recognizes his new feelings and the two agree to stay together from here on out. It's a really sweet story and I'm calling the lesson here, being vulnerable. The thing about Big Wolf is at the beginning, he's really nervous that this new little wolf is gonna be better, bigger, all these things. Whereas at the end of the story, when the little wolf's coming back, he's thinking, I don't care if he's better than I am. I don't care if he's bigger than I am. I'm gonna teach him all the things I know. He just wants his friend back. There's lots of cool lessons in this story about opening yourself up to a friendship, about the way your life can change when you invite new people in, about being vulnerable and not being worried about if someone's gonna be better than you in other ways, but just being open to the fact that having someone else in your life can make you feel really good. Olivier Talak does the illustrations. I love every book this guy illustrates. I haven't read them all, but he has such an interesting style and it's, it's beautiful. So fantastic illustrations, fantastic prose. In, in the English version has been translated from French, but they did a fantastic job. This one's great. Book number two. So if you've been looking into kids' books at all in the last little while, you've probably come across John Klassen's hat series. Uh, there's three of them. I want my hat back. This is not my hat. And this guy, we found a hat. It's the third one. It's a simple exchange between two turtles. So let's look at the story. The book follows two turtles that find a hat. They both want it, but decide it wouldn't be right for one of them to have a hat and not the other. So they leave it behind. But one of the turtles still wants it. Later, the turtles lie down to go to sleep, and as one drifts off, the other starts sneaking back to get the hat. And while he does this, he also asks the sleeping turtle what he's dreaming about. The answer? A world where both of the turtles have hats. The turtle that was sneaking away turns around and chooses friendship over the hat. And I think that's the simple lesson here. People over things, or turtles over things, I guess, if that's what they're doing. But, but friendship needs to come before your stuff. And I read some reviews about this and they're like, oh, the ending seems a little too simplistic. Why couldn't they do some other? It is simple. Choose people, choose your friendships, put your relationships first. Now, I love all the books John Klassen illustrates and he's done a bunch. There's this series that he's done, he's written and illustrated on his own. He's done a whole bunch of them with Mac Barnett and they're all really good. Um, his style is great, it's simple. I think in this book, the way the backgrounds kind of repeat on everything, it really pulls your eye to the action and the, the bright white turtle eyes tell so much of the story. As you go through this too, the whole thing is written just in the dialogue of the two turtles. I also like if you're into doing the voices, I like it because you just kind of have to pick two. Turtle one and turtle two, you swap between the two of them and you get through it and I think it just, it does tell that lesson wordlessly at the end when the one turtle decides to leave the hat behind, go back to his friend, sit down and go to sleep and say, yeah, you know what? 
hanging out with you is more important than me having that hat. It's a lovely little book. Definitely worth some space on your shelf. Now, book number three. Oliver Jeffers has a whack of books out. They're all really cool. He's always written and illustrated them. Um, the Boy and The Boy series were some of the earliest books that he did. The one I want to talk about is Lost and Found. So right here I have, it's The Boy Collection, so it's four of the stories of The Boy. And it's really cool because in it, it also has at the beginning of every story some of the sketches that he did and how he got to that place. Let's go over what the story of Lost and Found, one of the stories featuring The Boy. It's when The Boy first meets his friend, the Penguin. Now in this story, a boy finds a sad penguin. He assumes he's lost and begins to do everything he can to help the penguin get back home. He finally finds out that penguins are from the South Pole and unable to find a suitable way to return him, he decides to row him back to the South Pole on his rowboat. They travel through rough and calm seas and they tell stories to each other the whole way. Once they arrive at the pole, the boy drops the penguin off, but the penguin seems to look sadder than ever. Once the boy has left, he realizes the mistake he's made. The penguin wasn't lost, he was just lonely. So he turns around and goes back to the pole to find them. There's a bit of a mix up as the boy and the penguin cross paths on the open ocean. But eventually, the boy finds the penguin, they embrace, they row back home together, telling more stories to each other the whole way. Now I love all these boy stories that Oliver Jeffers has written. There's funny things for the kids to read. There's always this deeper kind of meaning that I think um, as adults and as your kids grow up, they'll really enjoy reading as well. Now one of the lessons that I really get is just the importance of being there for our friends, for relationship. You don't have to try to fix everyone's problems like the boy was trying to fix the penguin. He just needed to be there, be present, hang out, tell stories, be a friend. And that sometimes is the most important thing. And you know what? You might find friendship in unlikely places. So there's my list, three books. The Boy, you can get all these, they're really good. Oliver Jeffers does a great job with them. The four of them are How to Catch a Star, Lost and Found, which is the one we looked at, The Way Back Home, and Up and Down. The next one, the third in John Clausen's Hat Trilogy, We Found a Hat, Telling the Simple Lesson, people before things, put your relationships first. Finally, Big Wolf, Little Wolf, delightful story. I really like this one, I can't wait to read it more. Just teaching us to be vulnerable in our relationships, open up, let other people in. You never know what it's gonna do, how the effect that it's gonna have on you. I think these are all great. They tell great stories for the kids and the best part, you're gonna like them too. So if you're gonna have to read a story like 15 times before bed, it might as well be one that you really enjoy. So if you had a good time here, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna see more of these, please subscribe. Also, there's links below for all of these books. Um, I got them in the Canadian, the US, and the UK stores. So if you wanna pick any of them up and you pick them up through those links, I'll get a little bit of a kickback, which I'll use to buy more books to talk about. And if you stick around, I'll see you the next time we do one of these. Thanks.